As we've been reporting and you've no doubt been experiencing, the coronavirus is dramatically changing our everyday lives. We continue now our series on the new normal, looking at how those changes will affect the way we work, socialize, learn, and vote. Right now, we're looking at technology that may help reopen the economy and keep us safe at the same time. Many businesses are turning to thermal imaging cameras. The devices scan temperatures from a safe distance, and if they detect an elevated temperature, companies can deny a person entry or require additional screening. Our national correspondent, Jerika Duncan, shows us how this could help stop the spread of the virus. City Farmers Market in Georgia uses cameras like this to scan customers' temperatures as they enter the store. If a customer's temperature is above 100.4, they are given a flyer that asks them to leave to protect others. But the store does offer to do their shopping for them. The biggest advantage to infrared cameras is that you're able to see and measure temperature without being close to the individual. Chris Boehner is the director of global business development at FLIR Systems, a company that has been producing these cameras since the SARS epidemic in 2003. That's when the technology gained widespread use in Asia. The key is that application is not about an absolute temperature measurement. It's more about detecting those individuals with elevated body temperature higher than the last 10 people that have been screened. Fever is one symptom of the coronavirus, and many are hopeful that technology like this will help us safely return to work. What we're seeing is there'll be a new normal that will involve thermal screening as a frontline tool. Since the outbreak, dozens of companies have started manufacturing these cameras for use across industries in airports, healthcare centers, and even apartment buildings in New York. Do you see any privacy concerns? Is this sort of creating a surveillance culture? If you've seen a thermal image, you can't really detect exactly who that individual is. We aren't really focused on collecting data of any sort. It's more about as a screening tool. A screening tool that he cautions is just the first step. Thermal solutions for elevated body temperature are only one part of what needs to be a comprehensive environment, health, and safety program for these businesses. It doesn't detect fever. It doesn't detect coronavirus. We detect elevated body temperature. So it plays a critical role in that system, but is only one part. For CBS This Morning, Jerika Duncan, New York. And joining us to discuss how thermal imaging and other technologies could change our daily lives is CBS News contributor Nick Thompson. He's editor-in-chief of Wired and joins us from upstate New York. Nick, welcome. Can you talk about how thermal imaging actually works and is it a viable option on a mass scale? So we all emit light, and most of that light isn't visible to our regular eyes. But if you use an infrared camera, you can see all the light we're emitted, and then you can use math to figure out our temperatures. So you point the camera at our tear ducts, and you can get a basic sense of somebody's temperature. And as Jerika said, it's not diagnostic, it's just a screen, but it can give you useful information if somebody possibly has a fever, and it can provide incentives for people who have fevers to stay home. So it could be part of a solution in figuring out who's at risk of spreading the virus. Right. It's, it's an expensive option, though, Nick. It costs thousands of dollars. So it, it's something probably not a lot of small businesses are going to be able to afford to use, especially now. Right. It will be something you're going to see at large businesses, at major stores. Ideally, the price goes down. If it turns out that this does prove useful, that it doesn't feel too creepy, people will keep to work on it. And it shouldn't, it, you should be able to get the price down. Another technology you say could, could be vital in this are smartphones. How, how can they help us potentially uh, in, in dealing with the coronavirus? Yeah, when we talk about how technology can help here, by far the most helpful technology will be smartphones that alert you when you've been exposed to the coronavirus. So using a technology called Bluetooth, you can set up a phone so that it will tell you if it's been near the phone of somebody who has then tested positive. And then you'll get an alert and it'll say, hey, sometime in the last week or in the last two weeks, you've been near someone who tested positive for coronavirus, please take appropriate action. This is something being implemented in a large scale in Australia, working on it in the UK, in Germany. It's been going on for a while in Singapore. I imagine it's gonna to come to the US. Again, very beneficial, a little bit creepy.
Yeah. Well, there's a there's a, a little and a lot of creepy going on here on some levels. <laughs> China is using this kind of technology to track people who've had the virus, right? Yeah, China is using it to track people who've had the virus. It's also using it to track whole populations. I mean, this is the most interesting trade-off in technology right now is that often privacy is at odds with safety. You know, we're these walking pools of data, we're emitting data, whether it's the heat we're emitting from our tear ducts, whether it's information about whether we've tested positive that's going out through Bluetooth. There's all this data that we're generating and that's coming off of us. And all of this data can be useful in helping society stay safe. It can be useful in helping to reopen the economy, but it also can feel invasive. And so we as a society, as a collective, are gonna make choices about where we stand on privacy versus safety. And my feeling is that we're gonna be choosing safety over privacy quite a bit in the next few months. Well, safety is certainly urgent right now, Nick, so that's the priority, but you do wonder what the payback is down the road. You say, you say that smartwatches and wearables could evolve to help us in this too. Right, absolutely, right? So if you think about thermal imaging cameras, which are measuring our temperature at our tear ducts as we walk into a building, think about your smartwatch. Your smartwatch can be measuring your temperature at all times. It can be measuring patterns in your temperature. It can be measuring your heart rate. There's all kinds of data going into your smartwatch or other devices that you wear on your finger as a ring, you might wear in your ear. There's all kinds of data that could help us to identify potential infections before we spread them. Fascinating stuff. Nick Thompson, thank you, Nick.